Welcome back. Microfinance companies are increasingly uh, adopting the securitization model to raise capital. More than a dozen organized lenders have raised money over the past one year by selling their assets, uh, that's a micro loan units, in the securitized form. Uh, talking about uh, securitization in finance, we have the head of investment banking, Dunn Lauren Merrifield, Emeka Ngeni. Good to tell us more. Emeka, it's good to have you with us. Thank you. All right, so I'm sure for the benefit of the viewers, uh, what is a securitization mo uh, model, as it were, for uh, microfinance banks? Um, okay, but specifically, mm. securitization involves the the uh, like conversion of um, receivables mm -hmm. on the bank's books or contractual obligations yeah. into tradable assets. Tradable assets being fixed income or some type of equity interest in the assets. So, 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 so to securitize an asset simply mm -hmm. means to convert those illiquid assets on the book of a bank or on, on the book of a corporate entity into assets that are not tradable in, in the marketplace for investors to buy and, um, and are able to not trade from time to time. Uh, it's a typical, um, sort of like a choice asset for securitization, like you just said, is market finance loans. Um, particularly because of the granularity, they are usually small loans in large, pool, uh, in large pools. So a typical microfinance bank can have up to 6,000 customers with an average loan of say, loan size of about 200,000. So if you're looking at as 4 billion, so pool size, you, you have in excess of um, 6,000 customers. So th this sort of asset classes are really the best to securitize. But beyond that, other things like um, bus ticket receivables, bus ticket receivables being ticket from bus traveling companies, airline ticket receivables, as well as, well as, as long as a receivable can be created, mm -hmm. it can be securitized. All right. Well, you touched on it slightly there, but if you could go into more details on specifically what type of assets mm. can be securitized, and importantly, how can this mechanism be beneficial to the economy here in Nigeria? Um, classic one in, uh, in the Nigerian context would be the power purchase agreement. That's, uh, because what that simply does is that it creates a contractual obligation from a customer who would be utilizing power to sort of like uh, and pay over time. So that contractual obligation can be securitized and used to pull money today. So uh, if you look with the situation we've got in the, in the power sector today, if you were to create a securitization model for financing most of the assets, like the, meter, the case with the metering, for instance, you can actually create a securitization model, use that to pull down funds today and use the receivables from the PPA agreements to pay that down. In other sectors where securitization models have been Introduced in Nigeria, will be in the mortgage in the mortgage market. Um, we in the establishment. I don't know if you know about the Nigerian Mortgage Refinancing Company. Mm -hmm. So the establishment of the NMS created a model that's very similar to the standard securitization model, where you're able to sell mortgage loan receivables to market investors. And uh, so in other places will be in the agricultural sector, and um, in um, the public transportation sector, um, using it to sell like um, for mass urban transit. Mm -hmm. Um, bus ticket receivables can be securitized as well. So all of this sort of like can open up the Nigerian economy and, uh, and, and create this is the benefit of this innovative funding mechanism to start basically channeling money into sectors where they are really needed. And, and the microfinance space is another space where they are really needed so we can channel funding into the sectors. And that interesting thing with securitization that makes it work, uh, that makes it really more interesting is this. With securitization, you are able to basically um, create a, a sort of like um, asset tenors of assets as you wish. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you look at the mortgage sector, one of the bigger challenges we've had in Nigeria with the mortgage sector beyond the cost of funding has always been um, banks with short-term deposit. Can they give you 20 years loans? Yes, it's possible. So regardless of um, the tenor of the loans, once the banks create those assets, they can be sold under a securitization transaction and not be elongated. That's what we currently have in Nigeria. We have um, mortgages that go as long as 15 and 20 years. Yeah. And uh, so it's, all of that can start opening up key critical sectors of the economy, even um, in the infrastructure space. Again, you can create assets that, that receivables generate cash flows, uh, securitize the cash flows, release cash, and create new assets again. So we can use that for like airport expansion. You can securitize like landing um, rights and uh, payments for landing and all that can be securitized to release cash and create, create more assets that can be securitized again. And incidentally, you mentioned the fact that you know the mortgage uh, rates are where this can be uh, applied to as well. But what about the commercial banks, uh, as it were? Is it also that model uh, applicable there? And also, I'd like you to give us an instant of a successful executed securitization transaction in Nigeria, as it were. Okay, fantastic. 
for commercial banks and, um, and even mortgage banks, um, loan books can be securitized because in a typical commercial bank loan book, they have thousands of customers that have gone into this sort of like a loan relationship with. And, uh, and with the typical loan relationships, you pay to the end of it. But then with the commercial bank having short-term deposit, customers working to collect their money when they need, they can securitize loan books and create liquidity back onto the balance sheets. I use the balance sheet to create more loans. So effectively, by securitizing your loan book, you can use a finite, sum of, a finite size of deposit or a finite liquid asset to create illiquid asset, get that securitized, bring in liquidity and create additional liquid assets. In Nigeria, uh, very recently, um, um, my shop, we've been involved in a couple of uh, securitization transactions uh, from the very early days of the market. We started venturing into the mortgage sector, but I've not come to not do that in um, more critical sectors. So um, yeah, a good instance would be with the Lagos State Bus Rapid Transit System. Uh, we successfully uh, secretized bus ticket receivables for one of the operators under the Lagos State BRT system. And they are successfully raised uh, in excess of 16 billion for this institution to use for uh, sort of like um, building out more vehicles onto the Lagos. So what they effectively did was they got into this concession with Lagos State to apply a particular corridor. And after that corridor, we expect that some receivables are going to be generated. So that has been sold, received, released a lot more cash to them to go get out more buses and fly a different corridor. So what they've done is basically pulled forward, brought forward future cash flows to today, and they're using that to go into a new transaction whilst the cash flow from the existing corridor would pay back the, the, the facility. So that was the I mean, it sounds like, well, it, make, it makes sense, doesn't it? it, it the, these are good ways of conducting business. However, uh, I'd like to know more about the challenges, actually. What would you consider the challenges are of seeing more securitization transactions in Nigeria? Um, I'll say market sophistication uh, is the principal challenge. Uh, in the way the market is today, um, the biggest investor base, uh, the pension funds, and uh, whilst um, a lot of the analysts, they are sophisticated and they understand this, but just moving from traditional sort of like um, ideas of what a corporate bond is, the idea of um, having hard assets as collateral, because with the segregation of transaction, what you're actually selling are cash flows. And whilst um, over time in other markets where this has been done for long, they've come to have confidence in securitization because it's transparent. You can actually see the cash flow. You can you get monthly reporting so you know where your payment is coming from. Imagine if you buy an asset that's going to pay you semi-annually where every month you get a report that tells you this is how it is performing. And uh, so in other clients, they've come to believe in them and trust them more than the, usual, the alternative, which is uh, a transaction on the balance sheet of a company, which basically you just sit down and wait until two days your payment day. You don't know how it's performed in the last six months. Then two days your payment day, money enters the account. With the circulation, it creates a lot of transparency. But what we find out in our market is just getting the mindset to move from, oh, where is the collateral? Who is going to pay me if everything goes bust? These are the sort of questions you get from the, from the typical buy side um, of the market. Those are the investors. Then the other aspect of it, again, that makes circulation work is that by securitizing an assets or by securitizing a pool of assets, you most of the time you end up, 90% of the time, you end up attending credit ratings much higher than an institution would get on its own balance sheet. Right. So if I take a, any of our tier three banks, for instance, probably rated triple B, we can create a securitization structure that makes them go to the market and get money at the triple A level. And uh, well, the challenge with that when you go into the, into the market is because the commercial, the investors are used to having assets um, so like bonds collateralized by some form of form security. They start asking for that. That's the major challenge for now. The other challenges you see uh, just uh, mm -hmm. but that's sort of like more and more product being introduced. I mean, sure. yeah. All right, uh, very uh, fruitful discussion there on the securitization mm -hmm. model in Nigeria. Uh, Mika and Gene of Dun, uh, Lauren Merrifield, a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you All right. And that's it for this edition of Global uh, Business Report. Stay tuned to Arise News. I'm Ni Uilo. And I'm Adifemi Akinsoya. We thank you very much for your company. See you next time.